So again, this is Abbott Park by Jay Wilbur. Tim Nestor had never gone home on his own. He used to ride the bus, but there were kids on there who picked on him. Some days, Dad could drive him to school and Mom would pick him up later. Tim's older brother, Alex, was fine riding the bus. There was a long conversation at home about why Alex couldn't keep Tim safe from the bullies. Alex said it wasn't that simple. Mom and Dad weren't satisfied with that answer, but Tim got it. Alex eventually could brush the... could eventually... to make this a adverb when you start editing adverbs into a story you know you're in, you're on the wrong path Alex eventually could brush the other kids off his brother but he couldn't fight everyone it was complicated dad decided it was simple enough Alex could walk to school with his brother and walk him home on the days mom and dad couldn't get him there or pick him up Alex didn't like it All right, let's say Alex didn't like it much but he accepted it on the days he had to babysit Tim. Uh, babysit Tim, let's say to and from. All right. No, that's not gra grammatically correct, but I like how it, how it sounds. To Alex's credit, he never took it out on his brother. Today was Alex's day. Tim thought it was, but as the afternoon drew on and the school cleared out, he wasn't sure of anything. The office was closed, and this was before kids carried phones. He couldn't call mom or dad to see if they had forgotten. He couldn't call home to see if Alex forgot. He had his bike, which usually meant Alex's day, but... Not always. Sometimes he stuffed his bike into the back of one of the cars for the drive home. thinking about hated thinking about himself like a chore like taking out the trash someone everyone had forgotten to bring in the Tim. Bring in the Tim Nestor. Okay. As his shadow grew long and finally touched the brick at the base of the school's front wall, he hoped one of them would realize Tim was missing and come get him. It was a, it was a cold day. missing word in there. It was a cold day to top everything off and clouds took out the sun and his long shadow. The darkness grew heavy and gray. He knew if he waited long enough someone would have to come. He also knew his brother would be in trouble and though he wouldn't take it out on his little brother, Tim didn't want to give Alex another reason to see him as a burden instead of a pal. Tim didn't like being the trash that needed attending. Okay. Playing it on a little thick there, but I think that's all right. If he was going to if he was going to go home on his own for the first time ever, he should have left much sooner. The sun had still been out, the day was still new, people were still around, but he had no way of knowing this would be the day he was forgotten until much later. As he closed his puffy orange coat around himself and unlocked his red bicycle from the rack, 
he found himself wishing he had just faced the teasing and torment of his bus of the bus ride home it was hard to move his arms in the big coat but he wrestled his bike clock into his backpack already overstuffed with books a trapper keeper i think that's two words a trapper keeper and a ton of homework he was already late starting the last boy mounted the last bike and started the first wobbly revolutions of his solo um, of his solo ride home from school. Other kids his age went home on their own already, but they left at the same time as everyone else. Crossing guards watched them the first few blocks. A cop usually sat in his car on the main on the main street leading deeper into the city, the opposite direction Tim pedaled now. Parents were walking with some kids, and even the ones walking alone were sort of in the midst of every other kid walking alone. Walking alone, too, let's say. As the school slowly rolled back behind Tim's stretched pack and puffy coat, he rode truly alone. Uh, even shops were closing up at this point. A few cars blew by with swirls of lukewarm exhaust and every few of those already had their headlights on. It could just be because of the clouds, he told himself, but he knew it wasn't just that. This was a bad hour to start out a bike ride home, he knew. It was a kid-snatching hour, and would only be darker and worse the longer he took. Tim tried to pick up speed, but he couldn't really maintain going much faster than he already was. He kept a steady pace except when he crossed streets but the sun continued its pace to down below the edge of the world. Okay, that's a little awkward, but I'm going to leave it for now. For a moment, it was just a quick for a moment, it was just a quick moment. Tim let out a thick, wet sob uh, from deep in his throat, maybe down in his aching chest, just above his fluttering stomach. It was a bitter, hitching sob of a scared child about to go into hysterics. He kept pedaling and bit down on the, that sadness until his cheeks hurt and the tears still leaked slowly from the pain and self-hating anger. These were the kind of tears he fought back when the kids ganged up on him in the bus. Those moments he waited for Alex to finally say, that's enough guys, like it was all some big joke. Sometimes that did it and other times the poking, the teasing, and the torture continued. Tim had grown to realize there was no kind of tears, no kind of reaction that made it all stop. People were kind most of the time, but when they were cruel or indifferent, no amount of tears changed them. Adults ignored kids. They walked past crying kids. They turned their heads when kids were picking on another crying kid in the street or in the park. Tim had his arm twisted up behind his back one time, and a couple stared for a moment before deciding to go on and not get involved. Tim was on his own now, but he was always on his own with his scared and hurt tears all along. All right. He finally reached the cross street that opened into the walkway leading into Abbott Park. Tim had seen pictures of Central Park way up in New York. Dad said Abbott Park was nowhere near that big, but it looked that big to Tim. In another way, it, it looked bigger. Tim had seen pictures of logging roads through thick, untamed forest. Much of Abbott Park, much of Abbott Park, looked that way to him from the inside. Old trees, touched by untouched by an axe, leaned over the walkways through parts of the park, swallowing everything in shadows, even when the sun was shining. The sun wasn't shining. The day wasn't new, and Abbott Park looked endless from out here, like a terrible woods in The Hobbit, which Tim enjoyed. Uh, which Tim enjoyed, which Tim enjoyed reading in the safety of his own warm bedroom. Okay, so let's uh, italicize this book title. Unfortunately, his house was on the opposite side. Riding his bike next to his big brother as Alex walked or jogged alongside. Is alongside going to be one word? It is one word. Alongside in the mornings was quite pleasant. 
even in the afternoon on the way back, it wasn't any big deal. It was, it was a, uh, let's say, but. But it was a very big deal now. He couldn't go around the he could go around the outside. There were sidewalks most of the way around. Here, let me put in a missing word. That's what edits are for. Um, but not all the way. He'd be in the street. He'd be in the street and put a comma there. Two clauses. And it would be real dark by the time he finished that long loop. He had to go through. Tim shivered with the cold, even inside his big coat, but it wasn't all because of the cold. The longer I wait, Tim's voice shook in a way that brought shame. He already felt his share of it from all the crying. Tim kicked off and crossed the street. He was already on the other side before he remembered he had failed to look both ways. There was no traffic, but his folks would kill him anyway if they knew. He had other danger to deal with, so he pedaled on into the deep shadows of the first brick path, um, let's say on, on the first brick path into Abbott Park. Every motion from both sides sent his head whipping one way or the other to try to see what was coming at him on this lonely path. His hood made it difficult to see from the sides. He pulled it back, but the coat was so puffy that it kept riding back up onto his head. He was just seeing things. He was just seeing things, he told himself. Um, not real things. Just scared little kid imaginings. Okay. Everything looked to be in motion because he was in motion. The brick trail gave way to dirt. He knew from countless passages back and forth through here that this was supposed to happen, but he still felt like it was wrong. The trail was too narrow. The trees were too close on both sides. The signs and trash cans were wrong. There was a maze of trails through here, and he had taken a wrong turn, he was sure, even though there, was, there were no turns yet. All right. He could go back. He'd get, he would get back out of the park at the end of the main road if he didn't keep going and get himself more lost. But that was the sort of logic that most panic kids could not reach in their moments of need. No, the drive to keep going, to keep running forward, was always imperative. Tim didn't know it, but m many adults suffered the same problem when they were lost. He emerged into a wider dirt road where the trees broke open above a broad cross of an intersection between paths. This was the right way. Tim couldn't figure out why it had looked so wrong before. The cross trail ended up ended on both sides, not too far in, their each, in either direction. There were other trails that led to creeks and ponds both ways. Three blue vehicles. Uh, they weren't... Uh, they weren't... Three... Three blue vehicles sat parked. All right, let me fix that. Three blue vehicles sat parked. They weren't the same models, but they were all sport utility vehicles and all the same shade of blue. One was parked crooked down one way, and the other two were parked together down the other. No one was around. A lost kid, a desperate kid, would be justified in seeking help from adults. But this felt like a trap. There was no reason to think that uh, think that uh, to think that way. Let me make that clear. To think that way, other than the stranger danger. All right, let me put that in quotation marks. Other than the stranger danger imprinted on his young mind, but the but the color bothered him too. People trying to hurt him wouldn't necessarily all drive the same color vehicles, but he took it as a warning. Let's say a warning from the universe. I like that better. Warning from the universe. Tim heard voices down one way and crunching footsteps from the other. He leaned forward, tilted his head down, and pedaled as fast and as hard as he could between the blue strangers. He was an orange and red shape, speeding off through Abbott Park alone. Concrete paths picked up where the dirt gave out, just like they had every other time 
he had made this trip home from school with his big brother. But Alex wasn't here, so even though he knew the concrete paths were next and were right, they felt wrong. He did not stop, he did not slow, he just kept going. All right. A section of swings came up on the left. Mothers were gathering their younger children for the trek home themselves. This seemed late for families to be out. Tim supposed he, would, he was sometimes out this late with his own family, but he was alone and the clowns made it feel later. I'm going to put a comma there because it's two complete clauses on both sides of and. Was it before dinner or after? He had, it had to be before, otherwise his family would be looking for him. Maybe they were looking. Maybe they were at the school ye and yelling at Alex because Tim was gone along with his red bike. He thought about asking some of the mothers for help, even if they didn't want to help, even if they were in a hurry, they would have to help him. Mothers always helped when asked because they would want their own kids helped too. There were a few men too though. There were a few men here too though. The women weren't scared, so those had to be trusted husbands, fathers, or boyfriends. Still, all the men wore blue coats. Tim knew he was being crazy with fear, but all those cars had been blue, and now the coats were blue. It felt like a warning. Warnings were there for a reason. Tim left the path, left the patch of playground equipment behind as he kept pondering his choices. Even if he did seek their help, they would ask where he lived. He'd, okay, let me fix the tense here. He'd have to point down the middle path, this middle path, and say that his home was right on the other side of the park, a park not even close to as big as Central Park. The parents of the other kids, um, say the other kids, the parents of the other kids would just stare at him and say, well, keep going and get there. Uh, well, keep going and get there, kid, right? Besides, they were already cleared out now, and Tim was riding alone, let's say, again. Okay. Coming together fine. The path wound one way and then the other. Tim concentrated until his head hurt to be sure he stayed on the right path. Every move felt wrong, but his muscles told him this was the right way. Why was it taking forever then? He was on his bike. He was getting tired and slowing down, especially on the uphills. But... He was riding faster than he did with his brother. Since he didn't have to match pace with his walking brother, he could go as fast as his turning feet would take him on his red bike. Fear was a good motivator to keep those pedals turning. Uh, still, it seemed to be taking forever to get through this park. He heard footsteps, pounding, running toward him. He took, it took everything in him not to pee himself or fall right off the bike and faint. He spotted the woman jogging toward him up a bricked incline from under one of the arching walking bridges. She was an adult, but still younger than his parents. She could be high school aged, but probably college or older. Kids Tim's age were never good at judging how old adults were. Now let's just say this. Let's just not let's not make it general. Tim was never that good. Let's say that great. Never that great at judging how old adults really were. All right. Let's keep it personal on our main character. She was pretty, though. Beautiful, really. She showed skin and looked sweaty, even though it was a cold day. Her tight running clothes were blue, as were her running shoes. Blue was Tim's new color for fear, but she was a woman and she might help a scared little boy. Right, I'm going to put a comma because it's two complete clauses. Maybe she would run beside him the rest of the way home. She met eyes with Tim where he peeked out sideways over the edge of his annoying hood. Then she turned around. The turn was casual, but she ran back under that bridge in a way faster than she had been approaching. Tim stopped pedaling and coasted a while as he watched her go. She could have been planning to turn around anyway. It was getting late and she needed to get home too. Still, it didn't feel like that. When she met eyes with Tim, he recognized fear he recognized fear mirrored there. If kids had reason to fear being snatched, maybe girls 
had re reason to be afraid even when they got older. Places like Abbott Park might hold terror for more people than Tim had thought. All right, let me fix a typo there. Moving right along. She was afraid of me. His words didn't shake this time, but he heard puzzled wonder in his own voice. He was no threat to anyone. All right, let me fix his word there. He was no threat to anyone. He was only here because he couldn't even ride his own school bus home without getting picked on. But she didn't know that any more than he knew which adults were helpful and which were the strangers he was always warned about. The realization of her fear, the fact that fear of facing the world alone did not leave you as an adult automatically was terrifying to him on an existential level. He started to wonder if his dad felt fear like that too. If dads could be afraid like this, was there anywhere in the world that you could be safe? Um, God, why did one of you not remember to bring me home from school? Tim took up on his pedals. Tim stood up on his pedals and fought his way up another steep incline between himself and his house. He could walk his bike over some of these hills. He sometimes did that to and from school with the protection of his brother beside him, but he had no intention of setting a single foot down in this park. He was going to pedal all the way home before he considered resting. Let me add one more little thing in here for that color blue. That felt like a very dangerous blue choice. There we go. I like that we have a color that represents uh, fear. Does Alex sometimes feel this afraid? Tim wondered in horror. Right, let me italicize his thought. I don't always italicize thoughts, but I think it's helpful here. Maybe he doesn't stand up for me on the bus because he's afraid of the same things I am. I can, if I italicize this, then I don't have to add in the Tim thought. I can just pull that out. That makes for a cleaner uh, paragraph there, one that has impact, I think. With fear coursing through him like an undirected electrical current, he pedaled harder on the downhill instead of just coasting with gravity. Electricity was sometimes blue pulling out that theme a little more. On the next flat section, Tim steered through the wide curve. As he passed a trash can on one side and a green bench on the other, the lamps along the path lit up ghostly white. Um, the tennis, say the empty, the empty and locked tennis courts their high black fences showed along the edges of this fresh uh, spill of light. Right. The lights. Why were the lights already on? He hoped it was the clouds, but he suspected it was too dark to be, let's say, just that. I know I'm adding some words in here, but uh, I think they add clarity. You usually don't add in, you don't, usually don't edit in just. That's not a, a good just or that. You, you usually don't edit those in. You're probably just making it worse. But in this case, I think it makes it clear, and it's from the perspective of a younger boy. So I think the, that kind of those kind of qualifiers actually. Uh, ground the story a little bit more. He was pedaling through Abbott Park all along, all alone at night. I'm going to put an exclamation point at the end of this. Again, you don't want to overuse exclamation points, but I think it emphasizes his terror in this case, <clears throat> as long as I don't overdo it. How had it become nighttime? Tim cried openly now as he hauled through one circle of spilled light. Uh, one circle... Let's take out the spilled because I already used that. One circle of light to another. The park looked deserted. Um, I probably want to do something besides look, but I'm going to leave it for now. The park looked deserted, but he felt eyes all around him. 
Finally, the ivy-colored archway appeared in front of him, with the shadowed street and the partially lit houses beyond. He... His tears... Okay. His tears threatened to blur out the view, but he pressed onward. This was where it would happen, he thought. This is where he'd get snatched right within view of his own house. Just, all right, I'm going to italicize this first part, but not the second part. Right within view of his own house, just within sight of safety, because nowhere in the world was truly safe for anyone at any age. He saw figures, he saw motion, hands reached out for him, reached for him out of the night blackness on those final patches, let's say, of the night blackness from from those final patches of foliage of, let's say, winter brown, winter brown foliage. That seems fancy. All right. Reaching, reaching. They grabbed for him on both sides, men in blue coats. They would drag him to their blue vehicles that looked back, <clears throat> that looked black at this hour. They would take down unmarked, they would... Take him. They would take him down unmarked trails to the edge of dark water. Then the real poking, teasing, and torture would begin. The kind of unspeakable stuff that would make the bus ride home seem like heaven in comparison. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tim flew through the arch, off the curb, and across the street without looking again. Even though there had been no blue monsters to grab him, he bumped up over the next curve and raced the last few houses to his driveway. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Still crying, he dropped his bike with a crash next to the bumper of his mother's car. He put it away safely soon, but first he needed to escape this darkness. He ran up the steps two at a time, wrestling, let's say he ran up the concrete steps so that we know he's not in the house. He ran up the concrete steps two, uh, steps two at a time, wrestled, opened the glass door, and like a horror movie, he couldn't get the knob of the front door to turn. All right. He fought and cried and sniffled, but finally decided it was really locked. He pounded on the door with both fists, screaming for help feeling something closing in behind him. He rang the doorbell over and over the way his dad hated, hoping it would bring the man faster in his anger. Still nothing. The neighbors didn't even bother to look out to see what was happening. He turned around expecting to see men in blue, but he was still entirely alone in reality. Tim shifted out of his backpack straps and clawed at the pockets his spare key wasn't where it was supposed to be he searched every other pocket all and all around his books he returned to the proper pocket three times before he decided the key wasn't the key really wasn't there <clears throat> had he dropped it had someone borrowed it he couldn't remember time just Time just, uh, Tim, oh good lord, that was a typo that was going to confuse me. All right. Tim just sat down, his legs were watery and exhausted. Dad's car was gone, they were looking for him. So why hadn't they left someone home in case he showed up? Dad would go look, Mom would insist on coming, Alex would have to go because he fell down on his responsibility. Still, even Tim knew someone should have stayed home in case he showed up. They think I don't have the courage to come by myself. Tim sighed and covered his face with both hands. Maybe he should go to one of the neighbors, but who was to say any of them might not be men in blue? <clears throat> People who had fooled even his parents. Right, let's do a question mark. Who was to say any of them could keep Sim Tim safe any from anything in the darkness that would hurt him? He wondered if the jogging woman had gotten home safe. He wondered if his parents still worried, if her parents still worried about her even though she was grown. Tim just sat and waited for someone to come home, 
and let him inside out of the cold of the night. He noticed for the first time that the front door of his house was painted blue. It was full dark now. I feel like there needs to be something else. It was full dark now, but soon, you know, but the sun would rise. 